A site plan lets us show everything on the site from a top-down view, and today we're creating one. But just keep in mind, it's always best to get a survey before you lodge your set of plans. Before we get started, I wanted to show you what a typical survey looks like. Getting a survey makes sure that you've got accurate boundaries, as well as accurate offsets, as well as topography and other critical site features. But for this example, we're going to be using Google Maps because you can get mapping information for pretty much everywhere. But if you are in Australia and New South Wales, I highly recommend the planning portal. It's got all sorts of mapping information, which we can turn on and off from flooding to bushfire, as well as a bunch of other mapping for local environmental planning. Or if you're up in Queensland, Brisbane way, I highly recommend the Brisbane city plan. If your state or country has a local mapping system, I'd love to hear about it down in the comments below. To kick off, I'll just use the snip tool. We'll go new. So we'll start from the bottom right hand corner and take it all the way up to the bottom left hand. And that's created a capture. From here in our ARCHICAD file, we'll just want to go over to the view map, this one just here, and we'll go to our site plan. If you don't have one set up, we can just go to the project map. We can right click, create new story, and we'll go site plan new. I will insert this one below and for the height, we'll just go zero and we'll go create. We'll start this one from scratch. So we'll just go Go control V to paste it in or the Mac equivalent and we've got a map. So I'll click outside of this, then I'll select it and go control K or command K to resize it. We're going to do this graphically, so we'll just go OK. We'll scroll on down to this bottom right hand corner again and we'll click just within side of the scale just down here. We'll click tab just once and we'll type in 10,000. 10 meters is 10,000 millimeters and millimeters is what we work with. So we'll just go enter. That's adjusted our plan so it's to the right scale or pretty close to it. This is a draft after all. And like I said in the beginning, survey is always critical to get those correct boundary lengths, but this will get us kicked off. So we'll be working on this site 109. What I'd like to do is I'll go control E to rotate. I'll go down to this bottom part here. And I'm just gonna swing the site around just until we get it parallel, say there. Now within this site plan, I'm going to place a cabin on the back end of the site. So this cabin's already been drafted up. I'm just going to position it on the site. So what I'll do, I'll just go to floor plan. I'll right click and then I'll go show as trace reference. Now at the moment, nothing might be showing. So if I right click and then go trace, and then go reference on top. It's going to bring our cabin and it's traced to the forefront. If you can't find it still, if we double click the middle mouse button, that's going to fit the drawing to the scene. So right now, mine's just up here. I'll want to position it so it's roughly in line with these other dwellings along the back end. Before I go relocating it, what I want to do is I'm just going to draw in some boundaries. I'm going to go to the polyline. I'll go to the rectangular geometry method because this is a pretty simple site. I'll click on down this bottom left-hand corner here and scroll in just till we get to the top right hand here. I'm going to hit tab, we'll round this number off to zero. We'll hit tab again, we'll round this one off to a zero as well. Enter, there we go. And we've got some roughed in boundaries. From here, I'm just going to draw in some guides. So I'm going to change the geometry method just to a single line. And I'm gonna hold in shift and click that one until it gets to the top. I'm gonna to drag this to the right hand side, control D. And then I'm going to drag it. So we're roughly in line with this building here. Let's go 8850, enter, excellent. So we've got our rear offset. So let's bring it in some side offsets from either side as well. I'm just going to click on the polyline again. I'll select from the top right to the top left, double click. Then I'm going to drag this one down. Let's say a three meter offset will suit just nicely. Maybe another extra 500, just so that we get a little bit extra space if we do want to say have the driveway down the end. From here, we're going to position the cabin. So it's just in this corner here. We're going to do this in a little bit of a counterintuitive way, but it's going to make things so much easier. Instead of going to the floor plan and grabbing and dragging everything to that part of the site, because we don't have a great deal of site information, we can just drag the site to where the floor plan is. Can't tell you how many times this has saved a dramatic amount of faff on various projects. Control D and drag this one over just from that point in the corner and we'll click it just onto that deck point just there. Excellent, there we are. From here, I can delete my guidelines and we've got our cabin on the site. But if we turn off trace reference, it's just going to disappear. So we're going to use some fills to clearly demonstrate where the cabin is going to sit on the site. So let's go to fill type. For this one, I'm just going to use a masonry block. I'm going to click from top left down to bottom right. I'm going to click the fill. I'm going to use eyedropper tool to select the fill while I've got the fill selected. And then I'm going to click the bottom left up to the top right. And that's going to cut out of that fill. Just a quick way of drawing fills instead of having to click point to point to point to point. Um, always looking for shortcuts just so we can get a bit more efficient. So let's do that again for this bottom one down here. There we go. Now you can't really see it very well there at the moment and that's because we've still got the trace on and we've got reference on top. Let's turn on transparent fills and zones. Mm, that hasn't really done anything for us. So let's just turn that one back off again. Once we do turn off trace, it's going to show up much clearer. So 
for the time being, let's just leave it on and just finish up the rest of the fills. Let's select the fill again, and we're going to click and drag over the deck and this rear back one as well. That should be pretty much everything we need for now. So we can turn off the trace reference, right click, and we'll turn the trace off. From here, we're going to want a dimension from our cabin to our boundary. So let's go to our dimension tool. Let's click on our cabin and click on a boundary, then double click in this empty space just here. And that's going to create a dimension. From here, we'll just want to click one more time. There we go, 3.5, that dimension we just set up earlier. Let's do the same thing for the rear. We'll use our eyedropper to select the dimension which is holding a knot. Then we'll select the back of the cabin and we'll select the back of the boundary and we'll double click. And just make sure you don't click it while it's set at a slight angle. This will give a variation to the dimension and it's not gonna be accurate. So always making sure that it's straight up and down. So we'll click and there we go. Now, just as a little slide tangent, if you do happen to have a slightly sloping block, say like this, you might be wondering how you might get your offsets to a boundary line like this. So what we'll do, we'll use the hotspot We'll click on this corner of the cabin and we'll select it and we're going to go control D and we're going to drag it to the boundary until we see this little bit of an eye looking tool come up. We're going to go control D and we're going to drag it over to the boundary until we see the symbol pop up. It almost looks like a little bit of an eye. This is going to mean it's parallel to the boundary and this is exactly what we want for accurate boundary offsets. So we'll click this one in and we'll do the same say for this offset just here, just to give another example. We'll select our dimension. We'll click on our cabin. We've got true line weight turned on here at the moment. So to turn true line weight off. Let's just deselect our dimension tool for a second. We'll right click and we'll turn off true line weight. There we go. Now, as we zoom in, it's much clearer to see all the different elements there at the moment. So let's select our dimension tool again. We'll click onto this corner of the cabin. We'll click onto our hotspot. We'll double click and we'll notice from here, we can do a parallel to the boundary. If it's not letting you do that, it's most likely the geometry method here has been selected to this one here. It's only going to let you go up or down or left. So just make sure you've got this method just here selected and that's going to let us click that dimension there we go let's do the same thing for this corner just down through here we'll double click and click again and there we are little side tangent but i think you'll find it super valuable for those tricky sites so let's select all that and then we're going to delete that and get back to our example now it's not particularly clear what we're showing on the side here so what we're going to do we're going to start labeling things let's go to the text tool we're going to go proposed oh, always in capitals proposed that's the way i was taught anyways guess it's a bit of a preference thing let's bring this one over i'm going to go text fill background and i'm going to turn this one to a white and then i'm going to duplicate it and bring it down below and i'm going to go cabin i'll drag this one and i'll center it to the proposed there we go now the cabin isn't particularly clear with the fill that we had selected so let's select those fills again we'll turn those to a light gray uh, let's go a little bit more subtle there we go now for those other fills let's just turn those into something a bit more indicative that it's actually a deck slash patio let's go to these wood plank horizontal they're a bit small let's go to a plank floor hey there we are that's a bit better we'll reorientate it just going to construction method and then we'll rotate this one on up there we go let's just go to our example for a second so we've got a few other things that we will want to show on our site plan that we can see in this example here we we'll want dimensions to all offsets we'll want to show access onto the site as well as the approximate boundary lengths we've got tbc to be confirmed written on here just so that people know that these aren't boundaries that have been measured from a surveyor we'll create all of this as well as a little automatic title block just down here in the next few steps so that i make sure that i get all the different elements when i'm creating a site plan i've typically got a little checklist that i check off all the different points so i'll just decide like these two and I'll delete this. Usually I'd, I'll just go through with a, say a little fill or I'll actually have a separate document that I'll just check through on there. But for the sake of this, so you can see it too, we'll wanna show existing site features. Now on this one here, because we're keeping a simple example, we're not showing trees and all other bits and pieces or even different services like say power or other easements like sewers. And it's all important information to make sure you've got shown so that you're not putting the building in a place where it might cause issues down the track. Anyway, let's get back to the more interesting stuff. Let's go back to our new site plan and let's take this one and actually place it on a page. So to do this, I'm just going to go to our panel and we're going to turn on our organizer. With our organizer popped up, we'll go through to the view map and we'll go to the project map on the left-hand side. And we'll drag and drop this story that we just created earlier in through to here on our view map. Then from here, if we go to our view map and then go to our layout book, we'll create a new layout, call this one site plan proposed, and we'll go create. From here, let's change our title block to an A3. Let's go down to this one just here and we'll go okay. You can change the title block however you'd like. I've just created a simple blank A3 with no borders, just so we can illustrate things really super clean. From here, we'll go to our view map and we'll click and drag the view that we just created earlier. We'll drag this one over into the middle. There we go. From here, we'll drag and drop it roughly to the center of the page and we'll resize some of these edges. Bring this one just in through to here and we'll bring that water in just a little bit there too. We'll recenter it just to here. All right, now for this title just down through here, what you wanna do is go down to title type 
Yours might be up the top here and you'll just have to scroll across with your middle mouse until you get to this point down through here. If yours has no title, we'll just go to linear drawing title. It's going to create this one here just like this, but we're going to want to refine that. So let's go through to our title block. We're going to go from linked width to width for position. And we're going to change this one to say 80. And I have a preference for a circle for my shape as well. Looks like it's still a bit big up there in the example. So let's bring this back down a little bit further down to say like a 70. We'll go OK. Hey, there we go. Let's bring this one to the center of the view. Now, again, we want these to be capitalized. So let's just go back in through and we'll rename our view because this is all done automatically, which is my preferred way. We'll delete the ID for now and we'll go site plan. Let's call it draft proposed site plan. And we'll just click OK. There we go. So from here, we've got our title as well as our scale shown up and we can further tweak things from there if we'd like as well. But let's add in those few last little details just to tidy things up. We'll open the source view. Let's select our dimension. We'll dimension that other side. And then what I like to do, I like to keep the dimensions in line as well, just for aesthetics. Let's select this line just here. We'll click on the edge and we'll click on the boundary. That's another one done. We'll drag that one down and we'll keep that one in line too. Now let's create a driveway. So we'll go to the polyline and we'll select the geometry method for a rectangle. We'll click on the edge and we'll drag this one down to roughly where we want the car to stop. Let's round this one up to 27,500. And for the width, let's go say 2,500. Let's evenly space this in between. You'll want at least say 500 off the side boundary just for landscaping. Typically, ideally would be better say 900 to a meter. So let's just go 500 for this example though. Now we want to mention that we've got a proposed driveway. So we'll take our text, we'll duplicate it, tapping control while we've got the text selected and we're dragging it. We're going to go proposed driveway. There we go. Now the reason why I've got these as two separate pieces of text is if I just typed in cabin underneath proposed, we've got these wide parts of white that are taking out the fill and aesthetically just not my preference. So let's undo that. Let's drag the driveway just out on through to the road. And from here, we just want to create some boundary lane. So let's select and drag our boundary. We'll go tab so we can get into our dimension. We'll go control C to copy or command C. We'll deselect, we'll select our boundary and we'll paste that one in. Now for boundaries, it's always done in meters. So it's 37.290. So 37 meters, 290 millimeters. And we're going to call this one TBC to be confirmed. And let's turn off the text background fill just so it's not taking out the boundary. And let's drag that one on down. Let's do the same thing for these boundaries just here. We'll click and rotate. Typically like to have these centered within the boundary as well, where possible. Again, just a little aesthetic thing. We'll delete this one and we'll duplicate this one on up. There we go. So let's click and drag this one up to here. We'll hit tab, control C, and we'll paste this one in, reformat it, go dot, and then go TBC to be confirmed. Let's offset that one 50 mil as well. Let's offset these as well, 50 mil, just so it gives a bit of space for the boundary. Again, just small things, but as you go, you'll develop a nice fine OCD. So let's, just like me. So let's go 50 for this one as well. And we're starting to get that looking pretty good. Let's go back to our page, refresh it. Let's check our reference. That's getting pretty close. But let's cut and paste on our little checklist that we mentioned earlier. We'll start going through just a couple of these little points that you mightn't have on this site plan, but you should typically always show on your plans. So site features, number one, you should always be showing trees because depending on where you're building, they might not let you cut down the trees. Lot DP, this gives you a further refinement of the actual location of the site. Uh, street names, yep, we've got that. So what I typically do, just grab a fill, click it over the top. Let's create this one to say a solid foreground fill and we'll just go to a dark black. There we go, that makes it nice and easy. Contours on site. So contours are the slope of the land. So these little dash lines that we've got here, going down the land with these numbers, these RLs, that'll help us create a 3D site mesh. That'll accurately show the topography of the site. The slopes and the ups and downs and the dips and everything else in between. Let's go back. So contours on site, boundary lengths and bearings. Yep, we've got those shown, temporary ones. Location of any easements. This might mean sewers. Sewers typically you need to be 1.5 meters offset depending on where you live and what the circumstances are. Can be a big impact on a build if you don't pick it up early enough. Uh, site datum. We haven't got AHD like for a FFL, finished floor level. So the actual height of the building. We haven't got this shown on this one just because it's pretty basic, but it's just essentially what the levels are that you're going to be putting all the different Different proposed things at existing buildings. Yep, we've got this existing building just down through here. On a survey, this would also be shown. Access provision on site. So how are we actually going to get onto the site? So we've got our proposed driveway here. So yep, that one's ticked off. So that's for the existing stuff. Now we're moving on to the proposed. Proposed stuff, we'll want a roof line. So we've missed this one. And this is where the checklists come in so handy because it's hard to always get things perfect on the first go through. So if we have the checklist, we can make sure that we get everything ticked off. So let's go back in through to our plan. We'll open source view. Now I know that I've got my roof set up 
so that I can just turn it on with a layer. So let's go to our layers and we'll go down through to roof and we'll make sure that one's turned on. We'll go okay. Hey, and that one's showing up. I've got this set up so it's an automatic roof. Special little thing. I'll make a separate video for that. Very cool little trick. So keep an eye out for that one. Let's go back to our site plan. Excellent. So we got that one checked off. We'll be going through, checking these off. Location of any trees noted to be retained or removed. So we'll dash in any trees that we would be removing. But on this one, we don't need to worry about it. Four levels, AHD, FFL. Again, we're not worrying about those on this one. Building setbacks to boundaries. Yep, we got those checked off. Extent and depth of any cut and fill. So how high are you retaining or cutting into the site? Don't need to worry about on this one. One, proposed driveway yep we got that one shown sediment control basically if there's a big storm and we've got dirt out dug out onto the site to make sure that it doesn't wash away we've got a geotextile fabric that's been pegged into the ground to make sure it's not going to get shifted onto say like a neighboring site and last but not least 1.8 by 1.8 construction waste containment area so these are shade cloth bins, basically 1.8 meter by 1.8 meter, where they're gonna chuck all the rubble and trash while construction is underway. To get access to this ArchiCAD file with all of its different assets or any of my other tutorial files, be sure to check out my Patreon page, which I'm going to link down below in the description. It's where I put all the ArchiCAD files, adding new ones with each tutorial. Having access to quality base files saves years of time and stress with the setup. I can't recommend it highly enough. For more tutorials, check out this video over here.